Eve, Eva, Eva Murray. And I don't even know how to pronounce what they're trying to make Piper Niven's new name. Alexa Bliss is actually wrestling at the pay-per-view. We have a total of five matches. But we had four women's segments on this Monday Night Raw, which is a plus, and we had some awesome wrestling. All that and more as we talk about the hellfire of a go-home show, which is Monday Night Raw. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling, and we are starting... Sleep as I was walking over here. So if I'm like limping or like going like this, it's because I fell asleep. Anyway, so four women's segments. Huge improvement. So let's start with the first one. Alexa Bliss is on the playground talking about what happened last week with Shayna Baszler and Lily. Alexa saying that Lily was put in timeout. Nia Jax comes on the playground and sticking up for her friend. You know, Alexa and Nia do have a history. They are best friends in real life. Nia sticking up for Shayna, being like, you know, I, can, I don't know what happened to you. Why would you do that to Shayna? Shayna will take care of you this Sunday, Hell in a Cell. And Alexa goes, you know, I don't appreciate you coming onto my playground. Let's sell this in the ring tonight. So we started off pretty nice. Okay. And then, oh, and then the first of many counts and DQs. So we had Nikki Cross versus Charlotte Flair to, of course, follow up on this kind of lucky streak that Nikki Cross is going on. You know, the past three weeks, she's really been on a roll, beating Rhea Ripley and Charlotte in two-minute beat-the-clock challenges and pinning Rhea Ripley last week in a tag team match between Charlotte and Rhea and then Asuka and Nikki Cross. So in a one-on-one -on -one match, it was Nikki and Charlotte, and Rhea Ripley came out to ringside, you know, trying to get in the head of Charlotte Flair, and it was a count-out. And Nikki Cross won again. So if this is, not, I believe this is probably going to lead to a triple threat match at Money in the Bank. It's going to be Rhea versus Charlotte versus Nikki Cross. And then that's how Charlotte's going to win the title. Charlotte's going to pin Nikki Cross, and then Rhea's going to be like, "Oh my God, like you didn't pin me for the title." Like that. That's exactly how it's going to go. If it goes like that, I guess I'll enjoy it. I don't know. Um, but I'm just tired of seeing the same moments matches. Like Alexa and I, I don't mind because we haven't seen it in a while. But, like, Nikki and Charlotte has really not gotten a clean finish. And then, moving on, before we get to Eva, we had Asuka versus Rhea, which we have seen on repeat literally since WrestleMania 37. And it's June, so we've seen this on repeat for the past two months. This match was really good, though. Like, they finally matched the chemistry, and they finally had it, which was good. But, again, it wasn't a clean finish either because Charlotte beat up Ripley and they were and they had to have everybody out there like trying to separate them and they couldn't separate them couldn't separate them so I'm assuming so by the end of the night I thought they were gonna announce that this was in a Hell in a Cell but they didn't so I'm assuming that this is going to be the third Hell in a Cell match this Sunday if it's not then I am 95% sure non-biasedly it's going to be Rollins and Cesaro because I don't see why that match is not going to have a simulation, as I said on Friday, and I'm probably going to say it this Friday. Ronald Cesaro is going to have the pay-per-view. I don't know if it's going to have a simulation, but I totally see it being Hell in a Cell. But it would also make sense if Charlotte and Rhea get a Hell in a Cell match, I don't know. And we also have to talk about Eva Marie. So it was Eva Marie versus Naomi, and this trended all day because people are like, oh my god, like they're not using Naomi, Naomi deserves better. And I will say, like, Naomi trends every single week just because of we doesn't know how to use her. And I'm gonna say this, and I've said this for a while on my own channel, Naomi needs to move to SmackDown with the Usos and get placed in that stable. Because if like, I don't know how it's going to go. I believe Jay and Jimmy are both, both going to separate from Roman. But if they're not, and Jay and Jimmy are going to stick with Roman, imagine Naomi moving over to SmackDown, and then, winning the, and then winning the Women's Championship from Bianca, and them having all the gold, and then them all being managed by Paul Heyman. Like, that would be so cool. And great TV. <laughs> and I'm assuming that when things get back normal, and they do have that draft after SummerSlam, 
that Naomi is going to be back with Jimmy because usually they don't they don't separate couples and the only reason they are separated is because Jimmy of course was out for a year so that's why and plus they're not really traveling as much right now so expect them to be paired back that's how I would write it but I don't know so it was Naomi versus Eva Marie and Eva Marie came out with Piper Niven so that was the name they selected they did not select Mercedes Martinez and it was Piper Niven versus Eva Marie I mean, no, Piper Niven versus Naomi. If it was Piper Niven versus Eva Marie, I might have been a little bit more excited. So it was Piper Niven versus Naomi. And the bad part about this is the commentators no sold who the hell Piper Niven was. We don't know who this woman is. Oh my god, where did she come from? First of all, she's been on NXT UK and she challenged Kaylee Ray for the NXT UK Women's Championship multiple times. Two, she was in the Meg Young Classic. I believe she was in both. 2018 and 20 no 2017 and 2018 if I remember correctly she was in both yes I did have too many classes <laughs> so the fact that the company is really no sold who she was like just shows you how much of we cares about NXT UK like that just shows it right there and it was just so stupid and they're rumored to rename her I can't pronounce the name I believe it's D-E-D-O-U-P D-Dupe I think is how you say it but again you're really just no selling piper nevin like she's a veteran she's been a huge success on the uk indie scene she was a success in nxt uk she's actually the first nxt uk call up which is a huge deal for that brand but it doesn't help if your commentators are like who the hell is this bro you've seen her but i was actually happy that there was four segments and of course alexa bliss and nia jack so i think five including the opening which was cool but here's my thing so again no finish because Reginald got involved to help Naya and it seemed like Alexa Bliss was kind of hallucinating Reginald like she was doing this hill turn and he was copying her and it was really weird so I don't know if like Reginald's gonna get paired with Alexa but I don't think that should happen I don't know if like Alexa's just gonna like hallucinate like hypnotize other people I don't know they kind of just dropped this after, and I was just like, oh, okay, cool. But I will say that I believe there was only five women segments because of what Hunter said in the press conference. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway, uh, RK bro. RK bro. So, Riddle was talking to Hardy about how to be, like, better tag team partners <laughs> with Randy. And Jeff's like, you should really listen to Randy, you know, like... He, he knows what he's talking about. And now he goes, like, Riddle goes in this whole thing about, like, band and, like, how he wants his entrance. He wants Rick Books to, like, play the guitar. And Orange is like, you know, like, I don't want you to mess up. Like, I want this to be a big win for us. Like, let's just go out there. And this was a really good match. I will say, like, the New Day RK Bros still, like, storyline and matches are probably the best thing on Monday Night Raw right now. Just because of the fact that the matches are really good and they're really entertaining. All four of these men really know how to work. And RK Bro won which is even more exciting and I will say that I believe at SummerSlam it is going to be RK Bro versus AJ and Omos and RK Bro is going to win the tag titles. Maybe it'll happen to Money in the Bank. Don't know what they're looking at. Well, no. Well, well the Viking Rings are the number one contenders. But again, we don't know when that's happening. So, <laughs> question mark. But that'd be, that'd be cool. Especially SummerSlam in the 90,000 seat arena with huge tick, like tickets are expensive. Jesus. I saw those prices. But that match was really good. And our main event. Who of our main event? So it was Drew versus AJ. And Drew cut a promo, but it was raining really bad in New York. So my feed cut out. So I don't know what Drew said. But I, th I believe if I watched the video on Twitter correctly, Drew talked about how he was going to be Bobby. And Bobby's trashly. And how he's going to get his title back. And, you know, Bobby pretty much said the same thing, like, Drew's not going to have a title shot anymore, like, I'm going to win, whatever. So it was supposed to be AJ Styles versus Drew McIntyre, and then Omos was there, and Bobby Lashley was in the VIP lounge with all these girls, and the Viking Raiders came out to support Drew, and then it ended in a DQ, and then it made this impromptu six-man tag, and Bobby had to run in the back and get his gear, because he wasn't even, like, in gear, he was in a suit. And then the six man tag was good, and AJ wanted to go tag Omos, but he missed and tagged Bobby, and then Drew did the Claymore, and then Drew won. 
and she was like, oh my god, I can't wait till this Sunday, oh my god, I'll go with the title. This exam was good, I mean, I would have rather, like, them just announce a six man than have them do all of that, like, that to me was a tad extra, but, you know, Drew's standing tall, usually when people stand tall or the faces stand tall, they don't usually win, so I think that you could just tell who my pick is this Sunday to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship inside the Hell in a Cell, which is one out of three Hell in a Cell matches. And I think that's all the major things that happened on our- Oh! Jeff Hardy versus Jennifer Alexander after Morrison beat Hardy and Hardy almost had to retire, which was so stupid. <laughs> Don't do that. That's scary. Especially before we get to hear no more words. Okay, don't worry. And of course, Hardy wants him to have to retire. Storyline-wise and repeat matches need to stop. Again, no, like we can't do no DQs every week. We can't do counts every week. That stuff has to change too. We need clean finishes. I don't. There were actually very few clean finishes. I mean, that's every week. But even like now, like thinking back, like I don't think there were many clean finishes, which is kind of scary. But it's my night raw. Let's hope that after we get back, back raw improves, or after the draft. <laughs> So make sure to like this video, comment what you guys thought about the Go Home Show for Hell in a Cell on the Raw side of things. I'm sure the blue brand will be way better. Make sure to click that bell for notifications and subscribe. And I'll see you all tomorrow with our NXT review. Who is going to be that new general manager? I have a feeling it's going to be someone from Samoa and his name is Joe.